My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. I am Flash Isaac and you are watching 120 Days to Jam Physics. In this episode, we shall be looking at capacitors versus resistors. Capacitors versus resistors. In the previous episode, I talked a lot about capacitors. And I told you that the most important use of capacitors is to store charges. In your circuit, in your computer, when there is sudden cut in power supply, you will not lose your data thanks to capacitors because they store certain info, they store charges. I was also able to give other numerous uses of capacitors. Please feel free to look at the previous episode. In this episode, we shall focus on capacitors and resistors in terms of arrangement. Then we look at the major uses of resistors. Why capacitors are used to store charges? The most important use of resistors is to oppose the flow of current. If current is flowing, uh, resistors act to reduce that current flow. There are times when you will need to reduce the flow of current. You don't want the total current flowing to get to a destination. You want a reduction to limit supply to particular circuit elements so they don't get pumped or so they do not underperform. According to Ohm's law, voltage is directly proportional to current, which means the higher the voltage, the higher the current. And this is V is equals I arrow, where resistance or resistors is the proportionality constant. Voltage is what actually pushes the current. That is the potential difference. Voltage is saying, oh yeah, current, go, current, go, current, go. So as voltage increases, current increases. In circuits, you can either need one capacitor or resistor, or you need more than one. Most times, one is not enough. You definitely need more than one element to store charges and more than one element to oppose the flow of current. What are the reasons we need more than one capacitor or many capacitors? What are the reasons we need more than one resistors or many resistors? There are times you want the voltage to remain constant. You are okay with the voltage. You just want to boost the current. You want more of current like in your house in inverters you have so many batteries you can connect a few in series and many others in parallel because most cases your voltage is just enough you want as much current as possible to be able to carry your appliances once you are able to reach 240 volts or 230 volts for ac then you should be okay what you need is to boost the flow of current there are times where the current you need is just enough, but you just need voltage because appliances, they have various ratings. Some will say that you need at least 230 volts, some at least 240 volts, some 220 volts. I'm talking about alternating current. In terms of DC, direct current, you can't have all those voltage. You can have um, 24 volts, 48 volts, depending on the battery. This is it. Now that we know that more than one capacitor is required or more than one resistor, we need many of them, how do we arrange them? 
we can choose to arrange them in series or we choose to arrange them in parallel. If I say two parallel lines do not meet, it means one line is going like this, another one is going like this. This and this are parallel. If you have one capacitor here and one here, they are both parallel to each other. You may complete the diagram like this, add as many as you want, even another one here like this. So they are parallel to each other. If you have one here like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, so long they are connected together or they are on one line or on one tree, they are in series. Now, for capacitors in series, the total capacitance will reduce. It simply means that they do not add up. When you add capacitors in series, total capacitance will reduce. But for resistors in series, the total resistance will increase. Meaning, when you connect resistors in series, more there will be more resistance. They will add up, making the total resistance to increase. But for capacitors in series, the total capacitance will reduce because they do not add up. So, with this, we said that capacitors in series is opposite to resistance in series. Because in series, resistance add up, but in series, capacitance, they don't add up, they reduce. Meanwhile, in parallel, capacitance increases. So, capacitance Capacitors in parallel will give you the same result as resistors in series. And for resistors in parallel, total resistance will drop. Which means resistance or resistors in parallel is equivalent to capacitance in series. They are solved in opposite way, which we shall see when we start solving problems. For capacitors in series, there is increase in voltage handling capacity. You arrange them in series so that the total voltage handling capacity will increase. Obviously, if the total capacitance reduces and voltage increases, it means that the same current will flow. The variables are, or the two things we are playing with are current and voltage. We either keep one constant and increase the other, or keep the other constant and increase the first one. So long we are increasing the voltage handling capacity, current remains the same. So, for capacitors in series, the goal is to increase current flow so that we get enough current and enough storage. Since current, the same current flows and voltage is increasing, it means different voltage will flow. The voltage across the first capacitor will be total charge over the capacitance of that particular capacitor. So, if I have one capacitor here, C1, C2, and C3, the voltage across C2 is the charge, total charge on the circuit over this capacitance, C2. That would be the voltage across C2. So different voltage will flow for a series connection of capacitors. Since they are opposite to resistors, it means for series resistor, the same voltage will flow but different current. V is charge over capacitance because charge is CV and for parallel there is increase in current and the same voltage will flow voltage across the first capacitor is the same as voltage across the second the same as voltage across the third and so on and the charge is capacitance times the voltage flow Q is equals CV so one thing you should pick out here is that for capacitors in series there is increase in voltage. The aim is to increase the flow of voltage or the available voltage. And current remains constant. Then, different voltage will flow. For parallel capacitors, the aim is to increase current. Voltage remains the same and total capacitance will increase. So if you understand everything here, the opposite of each of them should be what happens under resistors. For resistors in series, the same current flows Total resistance increases, more voltage flows, and power increases. For both resistors in series and parallel, total power will increase. The aim may be to increase the power flow, but you choose 
what you need to increase for the power to increase. In parallel, the same voltage flows, total resistance will drop. What does that imply? When you arrange resistors in parallel, there will be less heat because if the resistors add up, more heat will be generated. But since in parallel, they do not add up, that means the total resistance will drop and there will be less heat that they look. So we are increasing power by giving us less resistance, less heat, and increase other parameters we need to increase voltage precisely. So more voltage will flow for resistors in series and more current will flow for resistors in parallel. If you want to increase if you want to increase voltage, connect resistors in series. If you want to increase current, connect it in parallel. This is opposite to what we have under capacitors. What are the uses of resistors? Since it opposes the flow of current, that means when there is resistors in the circuit, current flow will be reduced. So you use it to control the flow of current to reduce current flow. And since as we are opposing the flow of current, a lot of heat will be generated in the circuit, it means resistors can be used in heaters, microwave, and all those things that require heating elements. And they are used to divide voltage. You can use cap uh, resistors to divide voltage. You use them to adjust signals in circuits. Now, if you look at some electric bulb that have this filament, as current is flowing, resistors will generate heat. And that heat generated will be used to light up all these filament bulbs. You see, resistors have quite interesting uses and application. I do hope you found this class interesting. Let me know how you feel. Subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about the Flash Learners YouTube channel. In the next episode, we'll start, we'll start answering questions on the arrangement of capacitors. See ya.